Hi guys, welcome back to another Cosplay Extreme. As I am sure you've seen from the description, we are doing Alice's Vorpal Blade. Yes! Because he asked for it. And he asked for a 100% con safe knight. So let's get into that. A little bit of a challenge because I've never really worked 100% in EVA. So let's see how that turns out. On the other side of this. Right, so what we're going to need for this build is, starting off, obviously, contact cement. This is the floor mat stuff, and then we've got plain, thin craft foam. Tape measure. A straight edge of some sort. This is a steel straight edge. Knives to cut craft foam with. Rubbin buff. This is, we call it magic touch over here. This is silver and gold. Spray paints. Matte black and silver spray paint. For finishing, Plasti Dip. You're gonna need some sort of rotary tool. I just have a, a Dremel here. That's what we're gonna be using on this project. Some paper to uh, create your design on. A sanding stick or an emery board. Tongue depressors, a heat gun to seal the foam, and our reference pictures. Now that we've got all this stuff together, let's get started with our build. Okay, so as you can see, the Vorpal Blade from Alice Madness Returns is not a small thing. I am going to do a video later on how I actually get the scales to things, but basically what I do is I go, how big is her head? that big and how many it's one about the blade is two heads and the hilt is about a head now also the fact that she is holding this a little in front of her we can adjust that accordingly but to my measurement this entire blade is three heads long hilt included and that is the scale that we're going to work on so it's not exactly a vorpal kitchen knife it is a vorpal giant kitchen knife Okay, so now it's design time. So what I'm going to be doing is we're just going to be taping a couple of pieces of paper together so that I can draw this thing out and we can transfer it over to our foam. As you can see, I've made this thing a little bit too big, so I am going to be scaling it down slightly so that I can just use two pieces of paper and it'll all fit onto one block of foam without me having to cut a second piece. Now that we've got that, what's going to happen now is obviously going to cut the puzzle pieces off the tip, but these two pieces are going to be glued together like that. Problem being is you have this texture on the inside. Two things you can do with that is if you don't have what, uh, the big tools, you can take your Dremel and just Dremel this texture off the back. Me, I'm going to be taking these over to my belt sander and we're going to belt sand this smooth. Cool, now that we've got these two sides sanded down, we want to place our ice cream sticks on the inside, our tongue depressors. So what I've done is I've marked out two areas where the tongue depressors are going to go. One is going to be going in the hilt area, like that, and one just a little ways down to keep the blade a little straighter. So the idea is to just dremel these out a little deeper so that these can insert into there. Remember when dremeling this stuff, get yourself something to put over your mouth because you don't want to breathe this shit in. So here's what I'm doing. I am now just going to be sandwiching the foam together and hiding these tongue depressors on the inside. That way there is some rigidity to the blade. The biggest hurdle over here is to make sure that you know where you've put the ice cream sticks. I keep calling them ice cream sticks, but know where you've put the, the tongue depressor so that when you're actually cutting your blade out, you don't cut into these things. So, so now that we've got these two suckers glued together, we can now actually mark out our pattern. One thing to remember is remember where you put your uh, ice cream sticks in. 
A good way to do this is to pin your paper down and get to marking your shiz out. Okay, now that we have that, I would just go and cut everything into parts. Now we can cut this out. So using your uh, sharp knife, remember to always keep these things sharp because you don't want a crappy cut. You can start cutting this sucker out. Okay, so the easiest way to deal with the uh, handle of this knife is we can build it up with EVA foam and cut it down later. This way we can get the shape that we need and then just dremel it into the final rounded bit that we are going to be using for our knife. Now we can grab our craft knives and start hacking away at that excess foam. Once we've got that down to sort of a shape that we can use, we can then take our Dremel and start Dremeling it down to smooth it out and get rid of all those rough and ugly bits. Gone through, cleaned this up with emery board and I obviously Dremeled all of this out to give us these shapes. It's not perfect, but it is as good as I'm gonna get it for now in the interest of time so that I can get this build on the go. Cool, now we're going to get into shaping the blade. What are we going to be using that with? Uh, we're going to be shaping the blade using the Dremel. Now this is the first time I've actually really, really used my Dremel. Can you believe it? So it, it's a bit janky, I'm still getting used to it, but it actually it does the job really, really well. So rounding the back of the blade and also beveling the edge of the blade using the Dremel is the route I'm going to be going. This is how far we've gotten. I've beveled the back of the, uh, of the foam. I've also done the blade section and I've beveled this section inside here using the Dremel. Now we're gonna get down to actually patterning on those things. What I did, I went to the internets and then I found these. Uh, what these are is the actual, well, it's the designs that's on the actual blade of the vocal blade. So now that I've got these designs, I'm just going to take them down to the blade and I'm going to be tracing around the outline using my small craft knife. It would be easier to use an X-Acto knife, that way you get a more precise cut, but this is all I have. Uh, going to be doing that on both sides and it's going to edge or cut the design into the craft foam. Okay, so now that I've gone through and cut along all the lines in this pattern, what we're going to be doing is we are going to peel this off and well, it's not going to look like much, and I'm probably this probably is probably going to look like shit right now. Right, so now that we've got all those little cuts in to create the pattern on the blade, we can now jump into heating that up with our heat gun. And what is that going to do? It has a magic little trick where it actually opens up the cuts and exposes the pattern below. Really, really cool trick. Uh, decided to exploit it this time around. See what it looks like. And there you go. Okay, so now that we've got that done, what we can do is grab our trusty glue gun and start doing our detailing on the hilt of the vocal blade. Uh, as you know, this is one of the techniques that I love doing and it usually comes up pretty cool. So now we're going to go outside and we're actually going to start spraying our vocal blade. Uh, first we're going to seal the foam using our Plasti Dip. That way we can then go on to our spray paint. I'm using three colors. 
uh, Golden Brown, Matte Black and Mirror Chrome. Uh, the thing is, we're going to need to matte black and then use some golden brown to get a darker tone of brown and then the blade will be monochrome, which we will dull down later. There we go. Now it is the home stretch in getting our vocal blade finished. So what are we going to be doing now? We are going to be using some black acrylic paint just to dirty up the blade and get rid of that monochrome finish. Uh, easy way to do this is to weather the actual blade. Also, following up with that, we are going to be using our gold rub and buff to bring out the hot glue details on the hilt of the Vorpal blade. And we might touch up the details on the blade, or we will touch up the details on the blade using our silver rub and buff. Just a, uh, just a little tip, here in South Africa we have this stuff called Dalla, which is basically got rub and buff and Magic Touch, which is also a basic rub and buff. So the last and final thing to do is to actually put some red on the blade, and that is the blood, which we're gonna be using some red acrylic paint, uh, which is a bit too bright, so we are gonna be mixing it. We'll mix it down with a little bit of black, just to get it a little darker, and start adding our blood details to the blade. Uh, we'll also be doing a little bit of a dry brush on some of the parts, so it's going to be looking awesome. There you go guys, the Vorpal Blade from Alice Madness Returns. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this build. I also hope that you picked up a few tips and tricks and things that I also learned along the way. That being said, it was a real fun build to do. Please like, subscribe, leave us comments, share the video. Every share helps us out because, oh, excuse me. Yeah. Back to every share, yeah, helps us out because, well, the more people who see our videos, the more videos we can make, and only you guys can make that happen. So, help us out, share, like, subscribe, leave comments, the whole toot, and we will see you guys in the next video.